Hello, welcome to another video of cloud computing. In this video, we will discuss about the features which were provided by various traditional network and resource management software. And we will explore the various other requirement that is needed to be accommodated with respect to the cloud computing infrastructure. There are eight major features which were incorporated in traditional system. Number one, administration of resources. It deals with the addition and removal of resources or processes. Number two, configuring resources. It deals with all set of setup instructions and then defining its specific capability of individual resources. Number three, enforcing security. It deals with defining the user role and relative authorizations and then put them into the action. Number four, monitoring operation deals in maintaining the log and audit process with some suggestive required actions. This indirectly contribute to enforcing security. Number five, optimizing performance, which deals in evaluation of performance levels of each individual resource and fine tune it whenever it is required. Number six, policy management. It is a sort of repository where all the set of rules are being maintained and used during security enforcement. Number seven, performance maintenance. It deals in keeping the system up and running with constantly keeping it up to date and assisting the optimization process stages. Number eight, provisioning of resources. It is a process where the system responds to certain requests for executing workloads and assisting it in completing with optimal performance. So generally, if the system is to be categorized on the capability, then it can be on, on following five bases. Fault tolerance, configuration, accounting, performance and security but it is rare to find all of the above in one specific software until used as a framework for example ibm rivoli sp openview microsoft system center ca unicenter etc as we know that the cloud setup is virtualized as well as the resources are fine-grained which are delivered through internet on payment basis therefore few more features are expected for managing it Number one, billing is on pay as you go model. Number two, the management service is required to be extremely scalable as the cloud is shared by various users at the same time. Number three, the management service is to be ubiquitous as it is to be delivered through internet. Number four, the communication between the cloud and the other system uses cloud network standards and the managing software should also support the same. So as the monitoring of resources is extremely important feature for cloud where almost everything is provided as the service. Therefore, the resources are categorized into six and they are on the basis of the nature of service they provide. So they are as follow. Number one, end user services such as HTTP, TCP, POP3, SMTP and other relevant protocol based services. That is the one which is supposed to be monitored. Then the browser performance on the client is another monitoring aspect which allows the cloud service providers to optimize their services third application monitoring in cloud is very important and these might be relevant to uh, some certain specific tools like apache mysql any kind of database any kind of web service etc fourth cloud infrastructure monitoring of services such as amazon web service gogrid rackspace so this is more about the cloud providers overall infrastructure fifth Machine instance monitoring where the service measures processor utilization, memory utilization, disk consumption, queue lens and so on. So this, this is more specific to analyzing and monitoring the virtualized environments. Sixth, network monitoring and discovery using standard protocols like simple network management protocol which is SN, SNMP, configuration management database, windows management instrumentation etc. So in cloud computing, the particular service model will directly affect the type of monitoring with intended stakeholder responsibility. Let's take an example of Google App Engine, which is a platform as a service. There will be a very specific monitoring and management capabilities like create a new application and set it up for in your domain, invite other people to be part of developing your application, view data and error logs, analyze your network traffic browse the application data store and managing its indexes view the application schedule tasks test the application and swap out the versions now if, if you look at them very carefully all of these capabilities 
are relevant to the application development only so if i wanted to go and configure some of the underlying hardware there is no option which has been provided under platform as a service so that is why we said that the particular service model will directly affect the type of monitoring with intended stakeholders and their responsibilities there are few cloud management software vendors which are there in market and they prominently allow you to monitor and manage your cloud resources if you are listed here amazon cloud watch hp cloud computing ibm cloud computing microsoft cloud services computer association cloud solution bmc cloud computing it's not always that only cloud service provider is responsible for all the system management it's a shared responsibility this figure demonstrates the responsibility of stakeholder of respective infrastructure and usage the responsibility can be of an individual party or it can be shared one this is dependent on what model or service you are subscribed for here five different models are being demonstrated with six different resources so if we see carefully we have the very first business service user satisfaction application database server operating system and network so they are resources which are to be managed there are five different models hosted model managed services infrastructure as a service of cloud platform as a service of cloud and the software as a service of cloud now if we see who are the stakeholders stakeholders are either the provider or the client so it's not mentioned here so i'm writing here and there are certain shared responsibilities so these are being categorized on the basis of that so if i talk about the hosted environment or hosted infrastructure which is more of an unmanaged uh, system in this only the server will be uh, maintained by the providers whereas rest of all the setup are to be done by the client so if you see servers are in this particular section uh, business service or user satisfaction are to be maintained by the provider uh, by the client then similarly application development and its deployment database development and its deployment and to host all this operating system is to be installed and the shared responsibility is the network so both are both the parties are going to take care of that when you talk about the managed services in managed services the provider will provide you our basic set of applications where all the database management application management and the relevant environment are managed or are or are supported by the providers whereas the client's responsibility is only kept for the user's satisfaction and defining the business services so example which is given over as the network vip then comes the cloud infrastructure as a service so when you when you say cloud infrastructure as a service again you are you know getting the uh, compute environment here and this compute environment is virtualized now it's virtual and is again provided by the provider whereas your client is responsible for defining the operating system environment then database application and business services or customer satisfaction again network is a shared responsibility now if you try to compare hosted and infrastructure as a service are almost similar the only difference you find is a virtualized resources which are being provided to the client for usage then comes platform as a service in platform as a service the major thing which are being you know taken care by the client are application development rest all underlying environment will be provided by the provider where a virtualized resource will be included with certain operating system environment and the database support and again the network will come under a shared responsibility then comes software as a service software as a service again if you if you can analyze the virtualized server operating system environment database is being provided right because software as a service is kind of customization service user has to pick out what services they wanted in their particular application or particular software which is which is they, uh, they are taking as a service then the application become a part of the shared responsibility so both the parties have to maintain so provider will be responsible for development or further updation of the software whereas client will be responsible for taking care of all the different kind of features which should be applicable to its business process then network is again in a shared responsibility mode and on the client end the more important part becomes is the business service or the user satisfaction so if we try to accommodate 
you will see managed services and software as a service are almost similar with a few exceptions so this is how the complete service model responsibility comes into picture and defines that it's not the individual parties but the shared responsibility is very very important to understand for using a cloud service it have a very specific defined life cycle and undergoes a six stage in sequence number one the definition of service as a template for creating instance and in this task performed include the creation updating and deletion of service template number two client interaction with the service usually done through a sla which is a service level agreement contract and this is used to manage the client relationship and creates and manage service contracts three the deployment of an instance to the cloud and the runtime management of instances Task performed in this includes creating, updating, and deletion of service offerings. Number four, the definition of attributes of the service while in operation and performance of modifications of its properties. The chief task during this management phase is to perform service optimization and customization. Fifth, management of operation of instances and routine maintenance. In this, we monitor the resources, track and respond to events and perform reporting and billing functions. And the last six stage, it's a retirement of the service. That is end of life tasks include data protection and system migration, archiving and service contract termination. So overall following are the core features provided by the various cloud service providers. Number one, support of different cloud types, public, private, hybrid or community. Second, creation and provisioning of different types of cloud resources such as machine instances, storage or staged application. Third, performance reporting including availability and uptime, response time, resource quota usage and other characteristics. Fourth, the creation of dashboards that can be customized for a particular client's need. Interoperability in cloud is a major concern and a lot of cloud provide, uh, providers utilizes the proprietary management software so this generally leads to standardization of management frameworks there's a prominent authority named as distributed management task force who is responsible for developing the industry system management standard for platform interoperability they have developed one of the most prominent format for virtualization which which is open and can be uh, shared across the different providers named as open virtualization format ovf there's another organization computer association technologies they have developed cloud commons there are five different set of services they have proposed number one cloud association cloud insight which is basically a cloud metrics measurement service cloud association cloud compose which is a deployment service and this is interoperable all these are interoperable ca cloud optimization used as a cloud optimization service ca cloud orchestration it supports the workflow control and policy based automation service. And last one they have proposed is the service measurement index framework. Now this is a community in initiative by CA technologies. Now just to remind you CA technologies is the same organization who have also proposed the CMMI models with the five different levels. So the SMI framework defines and measures the cloud services in six areas. Agility, capability, cost quality risk and security all of above areas forms a set of key performance indicators for defining the services which are offered through cloud in total when we go and look into the detail of this smi framework there are 44 subgroups which are been defined and are being mentioned here each individual subgroup of these smi key performance indicators define a very specific performance of each individual cloud so when we wanted to do a standardization in terms of what performance a cloud provider is providing these are the key performance indicators on which we rate them and on the basis of this SMI and as per our requirement of the service we can go and choose a particular cloud service provider so this brings to the end of the presentation in case you have any kind of queries you can leave it in the comment section we will respond as soon as we can so thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe so that you can get the latest update videos from our channel. Goodbye.